What's up guys, in today's video we are going to be creating a flashlight like the one you see I am using right now. Make sure you stay tuned and watch the entire video so that way you have your very own flashlight for your own horror game. So starting off, if you're curious, yes I did take this flashlight out of the toolbox. Simply because, I'll be honest, I kind of suck at making realistic models. But that's alright, because we're going to be doing the scripting ourselves, and that's what matters. So let's go ahead, right inside of our workspace right here, I'm just going to add in a tool. Now this tool, let's go ahead and rename to Flashlight, just like that, because it is going to be our flashlight. Now I'm just going to grab this flashlight model I have, it's just the mesh here, it could be a base part if you're using it, it could be a mesh part as this one is, it doesn't really matter what it is. And we can just drag and drop it right into our flashlight tool. Now I'm going to go ahead and rename this to handle. Now I'll just make sure that we can pick up our flashlight. In fact, if we click on play here, we should be able to collect our flashlight. Yeah, you can see you're now able to hold it. Now, as you saw right there, my flashlight was pointing in the wrong direction. And that's alright, because all we need to do is click on our flashlight tool right here and change the grip orientation just about 90 degrees on the Y axis, and this should be working a little better. Let's hope that pointed in the right direction. So it looks like we need to make it negative 90 degrees instead of 90 degrees right here, but that is a very simple fix, so let's go ahead and do that. And now our flashlight should be pointing in the right direction. There we go. So now we've got our flashlight pointing in the right direction. Now there's one more thing that we need to do. And that is that we simply need to create a part right here. And this is going to be the part that actually has our light inside of it. So I'm just going to change the size down to something like 0.7 comma 0.7 and then two studs for this last axis. And now we have a pretty decent sized flashlight right here. Now it doesn't really matter where you position it because we're going to be taking care of that inside of the script so I wouldn't really worry about all of that too much. And we're just going to rename this to our flashlight. And inside of this flashlight part we just want to add in a spotlight. Now the spotlight, this is going to be our actual flashlight as you can see the light on my dummy over here. Now you want the face to be on the front right here and you can change the angle however you would like to. For me, I'm going to change the angle of my flashlight down to 70 so it gets a little bit sharper of an angle here. I'm going to change the brightness down to 0.5 so it's not as bright but I might change that a little later. And the range, I'm going to change to 22 just so we get a little bit of a more useful flashlight you could say. And whether or not you want to turn on shadows is completely up to you. For me, I'm personally going to leave them off. I think it looks a little better that way, but you can feel free to do that if you would like to. After that, we can go ahead, grab our flashlight, and drag and drop it into our flashlight tool right here. And we should be good to go. Now we just simply set the transparency of our flashlight tool to 1. And we turn off can collide and anchored will be set to true. Just like this. And that's all we need to do for our flashlight. Let's also go ahead and just turn the spotlight off for now because we're going to be changing that inside of our script. So, so far we have our handle, our flashlight, and our flashlight tool right here. But we need to go ahead and actually add in a local script so that way we can make this flashlight work. So let's start off right up here with some services. I'm just going to create a comment up here just to kind of divide things and make everything look a little nicer. And we're going to start off with getting the player service. And this is going to be equal to game, get service, parentheses, quotation marks, players. Let's drop down a line. We're going to say local user input service is going to be equal to game, colon, get service, parentheses, quotation marks, user input service. I'll zoom out a little bit here for you guys. And then we're also going to need one for run service which is a way to manage time inside of our game. So this will be equal to game colon get service parentheses quotation marks run service just like this. And that's all that we need for our services. Now user input service, this is used to detect input for our user or our player and players is simply this little service right here that holds all of our players in our game. I'm going to create another comment right here for our variables, once again just to keep everything looking nice and organized. I'm going to say local player will be equal to players dot local player. Just like this, this will get the player that our local script is going to be running inside of, or the player that our tool is being held by. After that, we'll say local character will be equal to player.character or player.character added colon weight. 
The reason why we say or player.character added weight is simply because sometimes the player's character takes a little bit longer to load than the player does. So we don't want to say player.character and not have the player be loaded yet. I mean the character not be loaded yet. And so it will just return nil. So we want to say if the player's character has not loaded yet, then we'll wait for it to be added into the game and we'll wait for that to happen before we go say in the character variable basically. After that, I'm going to drop down a line and say local current camera will be equal to, this is going to be game.workspace.currentcamera. And then we'll simply say local on will be equal to false for now. This will determine whether or not our flashlight is on or off. I'm going to create one more comment right here for our functions that we're going to be using. I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. So I'm going to say, first of all, script.parent.unequipped connect function right here. I'm going to say on will be equal to false. This is going to turn our flashlight off whenever our player de-equips or unequips, I mean to say, our flashlight. I'm also going to say script.parent.flashlight.spotlight.enabled will be equal to false. This will turn off the spotlight as well. And that's all we need to do for this function. Now we need to do something with user input service so that way we can detect whether or not the player touches their screen if they're on mobile or if the player clicks with the mouse. So I'm going to say user input service dot input begin colon connect function inside of these parentheses. We're going to say input which will be the input that it was detected whether it be a click a key press whatever and then we're going to say game processed event as well with a capital P to separate all the different words. Now the game processed event, this is a simple boolean, which means a true or false value that gets returned whether or not the player was typing whenever the input began. So this means that if the player was typing in the chat, for example, then the game processed event would yield true. But if the player is just pressing keys on their keyboard to maybe move around or something like that, then it's going to return false. And so we can continue on with our script. That's why we're simply going to say if game processed event then return end because we don't want the player to be typing or chatting and accidentally turn on their flashlight. After that, we're simply going to say if script.parent.equipped then. This is just simply going to make a simple check to check if our flashlight is actually equipped before we go turn it on or off. After that, we're going to say if input dot user input type equals equals to enum dot user input type dot mouse button one or input not instance input dot user input type equals equals to enum dot user input type dot touch then that's simply going to determine whether or not we're clicking or touching if the player's on mobile after that we're going to check if on equals equals to false then we're going to turn on will be equal to not on. I'm just going to leave that on on, I guess, actually. It looks a little better. Then I'm going to say script.parent.flashlight.spotlight.enabled will be equal to true because we're turning on our flashlight. And just for some debugging, just to make sure this works, we're going to say print on to make sure that we can actually print out this function that everything's working. Else, if on equals equals to true, then on will be equal to false. And then script.parent.flashlight.spotlight.enabled will be equal to false as well to turn off our flashlight. And let's go ahead and print on here just to make sure. Now here we have our main function complete that was going to determine whether or not we turn our flashlight on or off. And when we turn it off whenever the player unequips their tool. But what we need to do now is actually make it so that the flashlight follows the player's camera so that way they can actually look around and use their flashlight. So we're going to say run service dot render stepped connect function. After that, we're simply going to check if script dot parent dot equip, not enabled, equipped, then. Then we're also going to check if on equals equals to true, then. Once again, we don't want this running whenever our flashlight is off. Then we're just going to say script dot parent dot flashlight dot C frame is going to be equal to current camera dot C frame. And then script dot parent dot flashlight dot C frame will be equal to C frame dot look at current camera dot C frame dot position comma player colon get mouse dot hit dot position. What this is going to do is it's going to get the flashlight C frame right here, right? That's going to take our current camera's position and it's going to be looking at our 
players hit position with their mouse, which is wherever their mouse is pointing, and first person, that's going to be directly in front of them. So that's all that we need to do for our script, actually. So let's go ahead and close off the local script, and I guess we should test it out now. Now, in order to test it out, we should be in first person. So let's go over to starter player right here and change the camera mode from classic over to lock first person. Let's go ahead and click on play here and test out our flashlight. So my flashlight's rolling away, but we have it equipped. So now whenever we click, it should turn our flashlight on, as you can see, and the light is going to follow our camera, as you can see, which is pretty cool. However, if we click, we can turn our flashlight off and it no longer follows our camera at all. So yeah. I'd say this is a very successful flashlight. But one thing is missing, we need a sound effect. Let's go ahead and press stop real quick. Inside of our flashlight, I'm just going to open up the toolbox and find a flashlight sound. Let's go to audio instead of models and search for a flashlight. So this sound effect, it sounds perfect for me, so I'm just going to insert this into my local script right here. I'm just going to name it to flashlight sound and we can close off the toolbox now. So let's go ahead, go back into our local script, and we're just going to go in here and say script sound play, and we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom here and say script sound colon play. Let's go ahead, click play here, and test it out one more time. Now you can see we have that crisp sound effect playing as well which is pretty cool. I'm gonna stick the flashlight into the starter pack and we should be good to go for that. Anyways guys, I think that's gonna have to be where I leave off this tutorial for today. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, please make sure you leave a comment down below saying, hey, I made it to the end and my flashlight is amazing. Other than that, make sure you like, subscribe, do whatever you want to. I hope you have a great rest of your day and goodbye.